Hello, and welcome to Freshman Speech. My name is Malachi England, and I'm a full-time faculty member here at West Coast Baptist College. I primarily teach in the speech department, then I'm also privileged to head up the on-campus student success program. So if you're ever in the area, you want to stop by West Coast Baptist College's campus and learn what is student life like when you're here in person, we'd be privileged to have you here. And I think it would be an amazing opportunity. I hope that most of you get to come on campus here at West Coast at some point to see what it would be like to be here in person. It's, it's an amazing experience and we'd love to have you. Now this week, you're gonna have an opportunity to share a bit about yourself via a discussion post form going through, but we wanna start this class off by looking at the syllabus. What's required of you in order to do well in this class? And what can you expect from this class? What will it do for you? If you're able to on your, on your uh, Canvas, where you're probably at now, go ahead and go to the modules page or the files page or the home page. One of those three that should be on the side of your screen there should be on your left hand side of the screen. I don't know where exactly that shows up on the camera, but go ahead and pull that up and find the syllabus. Once you've found the syllabus, you'll be able to follow along with that as we go over it here in this video lecture. Now, what is the purpose of this course? What's the course description? This course is designed to give the students the skills needed to properly prepare and deliver an effective speech. So often when we think of speech communication, we think of the delivery, the part of where you're standing in front of someone and you're giving a speech and that's where it all wraps up. That's what speech is all about. But there's so much more. There's a lot that goes in with preparation in order to get to that presentation point. So we want to look at the preparation and the delivery of effective speaking. Now the student who successfully completes this course will be able to, number one, discover the natural and enjoyable aspects of speech communication in life and ministry. The natural and enjoyable aspects. Now I think it's pretty easy for each of you to see that you have a natural aspect of speech communication that maybe the person in the room next to you or I don't have. We each have some natural gifts and talents that God gives us that we want to be able to steward properly. So we want to discover what is our natural talent or gift in the area of speech that we can learn to steward, learn to sharpen, and use for the glorification of God. We also want to learn the enjoyable aspects of speech communication. Now, many people are terrified of speech. If you look at the greatest fears in America today, um, it, as of about three years ago, the fear of dying was only the second greatest fear. There's lots of fears in life. There's fears of spiders, fears of heights, fears of water, fears of almost everything. The fear of dying, however, came in second and only second to the fear of public speaking. The fear of public speaking. Can you believe that? Many people said that in that instance, they would rather die than get up in front of a group of people and talk. So some of you, chances are, aren't big fans of public speaking. However, there's an enjoyable aspect that each of you can find, and we're gonna show how to get to that point throughout the class. How do you get to that point? Well, we can find that when we're coming up to a presentation, we're new to the idea, we're a little bit nervous, and we, we get up to that podium, we give our presentation, we go through it, we're kind of nervous. It's not a really joyful and energetic feeling to us if we're nervous about it. But then we find that as we get on the other side of that speech, once we've given the speech, and now we're on the side of a completed speech where we've communicated a message, we've communicated something we're passionate about, now we can look back and say, okay, I was behind that podium with a message I was passionate about, I delivered it to the audience, and now they have access to that message I was trying to communicate. I effectively delivered. Once you get on the other side of that, you can look back and say, okay, that, that was pretty cool. That, that was kind of enjoyable. That was neat that I was able to do that. And then as you routinely get on the other side of a speech and the other side of a speech and the other side of a speech, you're going to find that once you're on the other sides, it's enjoyable and there's a sense of fulfillment that can allow you to come to enjoy speech communication. We want to guide you guys through that process through repetition in our speech communication in this class. Number two, understand nonverbal communication is as valuable as verbal communication when communicating truth. What you say and how you say it are both equally important. 
If you say one thing, but your body seems to indicate another, people are going to believe your bodily actions more than they're going to believe your actual words. So we want to make sure we're harmonizing these two and we want to recognize the importance of nonverbal communication. Number three, develop reading and interpretive skills. Develop reading and interpretive skills. Now we have an entire class at West Coast Baptist College called interpretive speech. And this class is all about taking the black marks on a page and turning them into a presentation. The black marks, those are letters, those are words, taking those and then turning them into a presentation. As ministers of God's sacred message, deliverers of the scripture, the Bible, we need to be able to interpret the scriptures correctly and to deliver them effectively. There's an effective and an ineffective way to deliver the gospel, to deliver a biblically read passage. And so often in church, you can find someone who's up in front of a group and they just read a passage off and it sounds very bland because all they're doing is reading the words. We want to develop some skills in interpretive speech where we can go beyond just reading words off of a page, but where we're actually reading the message. <clears throat> Number four, analyze the art of persuasion and develop skills to move an audience to action. In our speeches, there's always going to be an objective. Every speech must have an objective. Every speech must have an objective. You're going to hear this multiple times over the course of this term about speech communication. And here we're talking about, okay, we're going to analyze, we're going to develop some skills in how we can persuade that audience to action, how we can communicate and guide them to a point of congruence with what we're trying to achieve in the objective of that speech. So we're going to work on developing some skills there. Number five, discover the practical principles of speech, communication, and mature in technique and skills. Develop practical principles of speech, communication, and mature in technique and skills. There's a lot of speech aspects that are very artistic. There are things that you need to work on practicing yourself and honing just like playing the piano. And there's a natural talent and there's a lot of practice that goes into becoming a better speaker. There's some other aspects of com speech communication that are very practical. For those of you who are more analytically minded, you'll be able to grasp these hands-on principles and place them into your speech communication toolbox very easily because you're a very analytical, very hands-on kind of person. So we're going to be able to teach a little bit of both sides. We're going to teach some of the artistic side and then we're going to be able to teach some of the practical side of the ABCs of speech communication. Number six, evaluate personal techniques and skills and learn to balance strengths and weaknesses in speech delivery. Each of us has some strengths in public speaking and each of us has some weaknesses. Now, as we go through this class, you're going to learn some of your weaknesses and you're going to learn some of your strengths. You're going to learn some of my weaknesses and you're going to learn some of my strengths in speech communication. And our goal in this class is to first identify what those are and then to sharpen our strengths and to shore up our weaknesses. We want to use our strengths the most effectively possible because it's a strength, so we want to use it effectively. But then we want to make sure that we're also honing up our weaknesses, learning how to work around them or use the little bits we do have of them. So that's what you can expect from the course as a student. Well, that's what you can expect by the end of this term. Now the institutional learning outcomes and the program learning objectives are both listed next in the syllabus. I'll let you read through those on your own time. Course requirements. What do you need to do to succeed in this course? Lecture notes for this course must be obtained through Canvas and brought to each class session. Keep your notes up to date by filling in the blanks during the lectures. So as you're watching these videos in the future, past the syllabus, make sure you have those notes out either on paper, you can print them off and fill in the blanks on paper or on another tab on your computer so that you can be filling in those blanks as we go through the lecture. Oral assignments will be given by the instructor after each section of notes. These assignments are to be uh, digitally uploaded. Each student will then be assigned two other students' presentations on which they are to provide constructive feedback. We're going to discuss that a bit more, but you're going to have um, every couple of weeks or every, uh, since we're seven weeks, it may end up that, uh, or it will end up, you have a couple weeks back to back, where you're going to have presentations coming down the pipe that you need to be doing. And you're going to video record these, upload them to Canvas, and then you're going to be assigned to two other students 
to watch their presentations and to critique them uh, with positive and negatives in that critique. We're going to talk more about that once we get there. Students are not permitted to use notes or any kind of prompt for presentation one, two, and four. Presentation three is a reading assignment and students should use a Bible rather than printed notes. The next section is course grading factors. It shows you what percentage of your grade goes toward what uh, your each assignment, how much each section of assignments goes towards your overall grade in this class. Spiritual and academic integrity. What is this basically saying? I hope you take some time to read through this on your own. Basically what this is saying is, guys, this is a digital class. It's your responsibility as an online student to accomplish what's coming down the pipe. I, on, in in-person classes, I can go to a student who's not showing up. I can go to a student who's falling behind and I can confront them about that and say, hey, I've noticed you're not paying attention. I've noticed something's not going here. What can we do to help you succeed in this class? Online, I'm not able to watch you watching these lectures. And so I can't dive through the camera and help coach you through and make sure you're doing okay. If you're struggling, it's your responsibility to reach out to us, to reach out to me and let me know what I can help you with. And feel free to reach out to me. I've included both my work phone, my work email, and my personal phone. So don't don't uh, feel like you can't send me a text or something. That's totally doable and we'll work with that. So we wanna let you know, hey, it's your responsibility to make sure you're learning in this course and that you're doing well. We also wanna let you know that as an online course at West Coast Baptist College, we follow an honor system. That means that we have specific instructions before the quizzes on what is and is not allowed. In my class, there is one open book, open note quiz, and that's the very first one. It's a syllabus quiz where all it's trying to identify is have you read the syllabus? What did you pull out of it? Did you get these key points? And what do you want to accomplish in this class? That one, you have two attempts. You have its open book, so you shouldn't fail in that one. You should get 100% there. Now, every other quiz, test, midterm, or final in this class is closed notes closed resource. When you're taking a quiz in freshman speech or a test, except for the first syllabus quiz, you must have your notes put away and you must have any other tabs on your computer closed so that the only tab open is your test or exam page. Okay, and we're able to monitor that from our end um, through Canvas. So let's make sure we're sticking to that. Um, it's not something we want to get involved in, but just wanted to identify what is acceptable conduct and behavior in taking a quiz and what is cheating. Well, cheating is using any kind of resource, any website, any notes, any help from another individual during a quiz. Now, if you do have a question about it while you're taking a quiz, can't understand one of the questions, send me a text or a call and I'm pretty quick to respond to those and I can help guide you through that question. At the bottom here, we have my contact information, my work email, my work phone, my personal phone. I monitor my work email very consistently, so that should get a quick response, and so should my uh, either of my phones, so feel free to contact me. Guys, I'm so looking forward to having you in this class and looking forward to learning along with you about how we can be better communicators of God's sacred message. Have a great day.